boys don't fidget and lose concentration in class simply because they're immature. It turns out that their brains are wired for continuous movement, competition, and exploration. And this is thanks to the two chemicals in their brain called testosterone and serotonin. The point in the matter is, is we treat girls the same way as we do boys, and we expect our boys to be capable of learning in the same way as little girls, which is completely ludicrous. It does not work like that. There is a massive problem with obesity in the US. As per the CDC, 30.7% of American adults are overweight, while 41.9% are obese. That means that more than 72% of American adults do not take their health seriously. This is the Nico Lagan Show. Warning. Warning. This show contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Real. Real. Raw. Raw. And shooting you straight. This is the Nico Lagan Show. And now your host, Nico. One of the biggest problems that our boys face today is how the education system is trying to treat them like little girls. We're, we're expecting our boys to learn exactly like little girls do. And this is not working. Clearly, this is not working. So the question that I have for you, is our current education system expecting our boys to behave like little girls? Welcome to the Nico Lagan Show. I'm your host, Nico Lagan. And before I start, I, I, I want to say this. This one is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely personal for me. It is something that I, that I do hold close to my heart. How we treat our boys is, you know what? Let's call it ludicrous. It is absolutely ludicrous the way we treat our boys and we expect them to behave. And the reason that it's so personal to me is that this is something that I went through. This is something that has affected me when I was younger. And I didn't really have anybody to teach me what the issue was. I, I thought for a very, very long time that I was the issue, that I was to blame for what happened to me in my younger times. And you know what? Like any problems in life, I have to own responsibility to it. There's a portion of it that does indeed belong to me but that being said there is supposed to be help out there there is supposed to have systems out there that will help us be better and what i mean by this is the education system like if you look at the way and it's been going on this is not new this is not something that's that started happening a few years ago it's something that started happening it, it was happening when i was there it wasn't to the extend that it is today no questions about it but the point in the matter is that this has been going on for a very long time and the statistics are actually showing that it is problematic that our boys right now are facing massive issues compared to women when it comes to the education system so with further ado let's jump into it i'm just going to take a sip of tea here because my mouth is dry as hell already okay so like I was saying, this is going to be extremely personal. And the, the reason being is that I want to share my story with you guys today. I want to go over what I've been through and then I'm going to put it into context when it comes to what we're seeing with boys today, what we're seeing, what's going on. So I dropped out of school. I was 15 years old. I, I had just failed my third year of high school. So in Canada, uh, if I compare it to the Americans, to the to Canadian, it's like your third school of your third year of high school I was what 15 years old 14 yeah 15 years old when I dropped out and basically I had failed my year I had failed my third year of high school and it wasn't necessarily for a lack of grades I've, I've never been a, a struggling student if you will it was for a lack of participation I was never there I was always always skipping cool so i didn't fail because i was below average i failed because of attendance i failed because i was not interested in what the school had to offer and the main reason is that i've never learned into a net into a school setting like for me to sit there 
and simply listen to somebody speak for hours a day does not work for me. I have a lot, I've always had a lot of problems just standing still, just sitting still and doing nothing except for listening. This is torture to me. At least it was extremely torturous to me back in the days before I understood what I understand today. But the point is that at 15, I could not stand still. I had no intentions. Or I have no, in, I had no interest to stay in the school the way it was taught. I did not fit in that box that is the education system, at least back then. And from what I can see, it's even worse today, but I did not fit in that box. I did not fit in that mold. I did not learn that way. Although I was an above, I was an above average student. Like let's call a spade a spade. I've always been smarter than the average person. But back then, because I did not operate in that system, that system made me feel stupid. When I dropped out of school to pursue <laughs> what I believe to be better interest as in consuming, as in smoking weed, writing rap songs, hanging out with my boys and selling drugs, I thought this made more sense to me. This had more to teach me than the school system did. Now, you know, when you're forced to sit in a situation where you're not able to focus, when you're not able to just sit still and focus your mind and that system is making you feel stupid, it is like mental torture. And I couldn't take it anymore. 15 years old, couldn't take it anymore. Instead of repeating a school, I'm uh, repeating a year school, I'm like, fuck this shit, I'm out, I'm done, I'm just gonna do my own thing. Now, the school could have tried to keep me there. It, it was my decision, no questions about it. It is a decision that I took. It was my responsibility. My mother didn't get involved at all. She let me choose. Now, that's a different topic, but the point of the matter is, it was my decision and I chose to do this. But the school didn't give a fuck about me either. At the same time, as much as it was my decision, the school did not give a fuck about me, which made it extremely easy for me to just decide and say, fuck it, I'm out, I'm leaving. And after spending six years, seven years, so let's call it multiple years on the street doing very stupid shit that could have ended in me in jail, could have ended me, could have lead it to me doing jail time could have ended me in a cemetery. I was doing a lot of stupid shit when it came to drugs. And you know what? I'm very fortunate that nothing serious ever happened. I, it's not because I was smart. It's because I was fucking lucky. But the point is I did spend six or seven years out of school with a second year of high school. And I thought I knew better. And eventually I did go back to school after six or seven years, I kind of carried my shit together and realized that, you know, you're not going to get anywhere with no education. You're not going to get anywhere surrounded by people that are always on drugs. I, mean, I was not going anywhere and I fucking knew it even more than that. I, I, I was kind of a crossroad when I, when I was about 20 years old, I was offered a choice to get even deeper into the world that I was part of. Or I had, I, I was given the opportunity to go back to school. This is something that was offered by my mother back then. She offered me, she's like, listen, I can't pay for your education, but I can give you a roof. If you want to come back home, I will give you what I can in order for you to go back to school. And this is exactly what I did. So without studying, without nothing, I literally passed my high school equivalency. Then I headed to college where I spent one and a half year in a technical college as a computer technician. The, the, the thing is, what, what I came to realize is my lack of attention, my lack of being able to sit still was labeled, or at least is labeled today as ADHD. It is labeled as a medical, uh, a medical condition where somebody cannot stand still. Somebody has problems just sitting there and doing nothing but listen. Yet, you know, 20 years ago, 21 years ago, I wasn't aware of this. I wasn't aware that this is what was going on in my head. I was never diagnosed with this stuff. And, and you'll see what I think about this, but this is not something that I was aware of. But one thing that I did realize is, yes, I can focus. Yes, it was very hard for me to 
keep focus on one single thing because my mind is always, and even to this day, my mind is always going in a million different fucking uh, direction. It's always going in that different direction. It never stops. I'm, I'm an extremely, extremely um, inventive person, creative person, but it is extremely hard for me to focus on something and stay focused on it. But when I was back in college, I started competing at basketball again because, you know, I, I've always been into sports my whole life. My, I, I will thank my mother for this. When I was younger, my mother actually put me into sports. She, I, I don't know if she knew. I don't know if it was something instinctual or she was actually aware of this. But she put me into, I played baseball, I played hockey, and then I ended up uh, playing basketball, which I played literally my whole life. Like I, even when I wasn't in school, I was in basketball. I was playing basketball on the weekends. I always had a ball. And, you know, looking back, I can tell you something that that basketball helped me focus my mind. I was dribbling everywhere, man. When I got in contact with that basketball for the first time, it never left my hand. I was always dribbling. I always had it with me. And in my 20s, when I went back to school, I started playing basketball again. And this is when I discovered the gym. I started hitting the gym. I started being more conscious of exercising. And what I realized is that it helped focus my mind. Being able to exercise on a daily basis, even multiple times a day, helped me focus my mind. And it's something that just came with time. As I'm playing basketball again, as I'm hitting the gym, as I'm back in school studying, I, although I don't learn very well from sitting in the classroom, just sitting there, one thing that this allowed me is to really calm my mind down. I wasn't as everywhere. Like I wasn't all as, my mind wasn't going in a million different direction after I exercised. After I exercised, it's like I took, you know what? Exercising became, and still is today, my medication. This is what I learned to use to calm my mind down to a point where it's ready to learn, it's ready to absorb information in a more traditional way. Yet, I, I don't understand why this is something that was never taught to me. It's not nothing that in school was taught to me. It's not something that I learned by studying, it's just something that came naturally to me. And ever since, I can tell you, I'm 41 years old now. I've been hitting the gym longer than half of my life. I've been at the gym for about 21 years out of 41 years. I've competed in martial art end of my 20s, beginning of my 30s. So I, I've learned over the time that how I, I learned how important it was for me to simply keep active to calm my mind. It has really become my ADHD medication. And to this day, I can tell you something that to this day, I still use martial art and the gym as my coping mechanism. Like, let, let me put it in context for you. I'm somebody that gets up two o'clock in the morning between 1.45 and three is about when I get up every morning. And I will work nonstop until about 11. Then 11, I go to the gym. The reason I do that is I'm really, I really started treating my mind and my body as a science, as a science experiment. What I've learned over the years is that all of my created stuff, and God knows my job is extremely creative. Like I have to come up. I probably do three to four hours of research every day in order to get ready for some of the episodes that I do for the content that I create all the time. So I'm also writing it. I'm also writing my second book right now. I write a shit ton of blogs. I'm always writing and putting my thoughts on paper. And one thing that I've realized is that all my creative juices are, is done in the morning. So until about 11 from, eh, let, let's call it three, three to 11. So that eight hour span. I spend it doing my creative stuff because this is where my mind goes everywhere. And, and science will show that to you today that 
somebody that is affected by ADHD will be more creative than the average person. It will, here's a quote for you. Although ADHD may have negative consequences for academic achievement, employment performance, and social relationship, ADHD brings a clear advantage. The ability to be more creative in two different ways. More than, th more than two, but the two main ways are is called diversion thinking and conceptual expansion. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but let me explain to you what that means. Divergent thinking is the ability to think of many ideas from a single starting point. In many ways, it's synonymous with creative problem solving. So somebody that's good at divergent thinking will be able to find multiple solutions to a problem. So let's say that you're faced with an issue. I can sit down when faced with an issue and I'll come up with 10 solutions. I'll come up with 10 different solutions for that same problem. This is what diversion thinking is. And the second thing that's extraordinary with ADHD is what we call conceptual expansion. That's the ability to loosen the boundaries of concept. Um, one of the examples I can give you is, imagine that a paperclip. So originally a paperclip was meant to hold paper together. Somebody with conceptual expansion can look at that, uh, at that paperclip and say, oh shit, this is what I could use in order to pry open a battery compartment of my wristwatch. So basically what conceptual uh, expansion means is that you can see multiple use for the same thing. You can use your imagination to expand the, con the concept of an object. Imagine using a quarter as a screwdriver. That's what, simply put, this is what conceptual expansion means. Now, what the hell does that have to do with boys in schools? Well, let me tell you this. First and foremost, I want to be grateful for my mother for recognizing that I did have too much energy for my own good, that I needed to expand that energy in order to be able to do something else. And I'll always be grateful for that because it is because of her that I'm still a fucking workhorse today, that I'm always exercising, that I am... I put so much importance on exercising. It's absolutely, it's crazy. But yet, this is where it comes from. Now, where this relates to the issue that I'm seeing with boys today, when I say that we need to stop treating boys like girls, is because of this. Can you, I know a bunch of you out there are parents. I know a bunch of you have boys. So let me ask you this. Did you, do you know a lot of boys that are capable of sitting still for more than 20 minutes at a time? Do you know, and by that I mean without a cell phone, without having a piece of technology in front of them to keep them focused. How many of you are, can tell me that boys are capable of sitting still for 20 minutes with nothing to do? Yet, if you think about who's talent it is or who is more prone to doing that it's little girls and this is a talent i don't know if, it, if talent is the right word but it is this is something that girls naturally do a lot easier they're they're capable of sitting still being more calm but in general boys have way too much energy they're always fucking moving now you know what's interesting is that this is something that I face. This is something that a lot of boys face in the education system. This is something that professional know about. This is not a secret. What I'm telling you right now, I didn't fucking discover this. This is something that all experts out there will agree on, that boys have problems sitting still compared to, to little girls. So why is it that, if you look at elementary school, why is it that classes are a minimum of 20 minutes and can range up to, to three hours. Why is it that in high school, classes range from 40 minutes to three hours? Why is it that we expect boys to be able to sit there and pay attention and be calm when we know for a fact that that is not how we are by nature? Boys don't fidget and lose concentration in class simply because they're immature. It turns out that their brains are wired for continuous movement 
competition and exploration. And this is thanks to the two chemicals in their brain called testosterone and serotonin. So it is on a physical level that boys cannot sit still. It has nothing to do with them being more stupid than women or having more problems learning than girls. The point in the matter is, is we treat girls the same way as we do boys and we expect our boys to be capable of learning in the same way as little girls, which is completely ludicrous. It does not work like that. Why do you think that three times more boys are prone to ADHD than girls are? Is it really a problem with ADHD? Or is it just a problem that we fail to recognize that the real issue is that boys have energy that they need to spend before they can actually learn? I'm not special in the way that I am. This is how the average boy is. And I guarantee you something that this could change the whole education system. Admitting that boys and girls do not work the same needs to happen. It needs to change for the sake of our boys. And the solution is not that complicated. This is the worst part out of all of this is that there is a win-win solution to this that is extremely fucking simple that even used to exist. We just chose to remove it for, for reasons that are beyond my comprehension. And if any of you are capable of telling me why we did this, I would fucking welcome the information because I don't understand why we did. But the point in the matter is that there is a solution because let me just... You know, let me say this. I've been saying ADHD a lot. Let's agree on something. Let's agree. I, I will. I, I tend to assume that everybody knows what it is, but let's take a second for me to explain it. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. As per the, as per the Mayo Clinic, here are some of the main symptoms of ADHD. Having problems focusing, easily distracted, always fidgeting, on the go, in constant, mo uh, in constant motion, talks too much, having problems playing or doing an activity quietly. So basically we have too fucking much, we have to, boys have too much energy. This is what it means. And ask any teachers out there, ask any parents, they will tell you that the teachers will always complain about boys, about them not being able to sit still. So is it really a problem with ADHD? Like I've always thought that it is, or that doctors think that it is, or is it just the fact that men, and, that girl and boys are just simply wired differently? Is it just the fact that boys and girls are wired differently, that we need to teach them in a different matter? And you know, I, I told you that there is a win-win solution and it is fucking simple bring back PE classes on the daily. And PE classes are simply classes where boys can play fucking sports. Like it's not, it, it's not that fucking complicated because as per scientist Claire Nader, decades ago, at least I remember when I was a kid, we had daily PE classes. That was the norm. It was like that everywhere. These days though, like in the current system right now, only 4% of elementary school have daily PE classes. 7% of middle school have daily PE classes. And only 2% of high school have PE classes. There's even 22% of schools in the U.S. that have no PE classes whatsoever. How can we expect our boys to be able to behave if we do not give them outlets to burn all that energy that they have. Please tell me if you guys have an answer to this, I want to hear it, leave it in the comments below. But this is completely fucking insane if you ask me that we expect boys to behave like little girls, although we our brains are wired differently because of testosterone levels that we have and the serotonin levels that we have. This is proven scientifically. I'm not making this shit up. You can go check the episode, go at the bottom. I put all my references in there, but it is completely fucking nuts that me, that I can see this, but yet the people out there, the people in charge of our education system do not see this. So 
why not bring back those P classes on a daily basis? Why not make this every school out there, every day, first thing in the morning, P class? I guarantee you, give them 45 minutes to an hour of P class every day, and you will see your boys are going to start in they're going to start improving in their lessons. They're going to start being able to pay more attention. They're going to be able to sit there for longer because they will have spent a ton of energy that is just that is just urging inside of them. And why do I say that it's a win-win solution? It's a win-win solution. Let me tell you exactly why this is a win-win solution. I don't know if you're fuck. If you don't know, you're fucking blind. But there is a massive problem with obesity in the U.S. As per the CDC. 37, 30.7% of American adults are overweight, while 41.9% are obese. That means that more than 72% of American adults do not take their health seriously. What's worse about this is that if a child has a parent that is obese, they have one out of two chances of becoming obese themselves. If both of their parents are obese, 80 fucking percent chances that they will become obese. As per the CDC, a child should have 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise every day. Do you know how many kids actually get that? Less than one out of four. It's 24% of American kids get the minimum exercise level that the CDC recommends. 24%. And somehow we thought it was a great fucking idea to remove PE classes from the curriculum in the school system. How fucking ludicrous does that sound to you? It's absolutely nuts. This is such an easy solution. Not only will we help our boys with their concentration, with their focus, with improving how they are in class so that they can learn better, we could help with this massive obese and overweight problem that the U.S. have. Yet, is that something that you see people talk about? No. This needs to, br to be brought back to the to the to the forward of the problem this is one of the biggest problems that we have we have a bunch of fat people and we have a bunch of kids that can't fucking pay attention so why not bring back p classes on a daily basis and help our kids be better and improve their grades i will th this is one thing this is something I, I i hold extremely close to my heart there is nothing more important in my life than fitness in order to enable my brain to work. And I want to, I will be talking about this more and more because I do believe that there's other solutions that I need to bring forward, that we need to bring forward that will help our boys in the education system. Just know that this is just the first episode of many. This is a subject that I want to explore in extreme detail. If, in, if any of you out there listening to this have suggestion or are part of the education system and want to talk about this with me, please reach out to me on any of my social media. I want to hear from you. Leave comments here. I want to hear from you. But until then, I want to thank every single one of you out there. Thank you for commenting on my stuff. Thank you for being part of this. Without you, what I do would have no meaning. So know that I'm extremely grateful for all of you out there. And until next time, remember this, the world is changed one man at a time, and it takes only one man to change the world. Peace out. You've been listening to The Nico Lagan Show. Nico has been involved in the martial arts for 20 years. He's a Muay Thai coach, focus coach, podcaster, and sought-after public speaker. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Coach Nico Lagan and on YouTube at The Nico Lagan Show. See you next time.